Okay, so for those of you that um, haven't met me, uh, a little bit of background about me. Um, I'm currently with ANI um, as a specialist in the Epneta technology. I've worked in the network and web application performance space most of my professional career, and I've got over a decade of experience with the Epneta product suite. Um, I also like to go into mountains and eat sandwiches there. Um, so that's a picture of me in Nepal. Today, what I want to cover is um, real world examples of the topic of our of our webinar today, um, how to get visibility to those that work remotely when traditional network monitoring tools don't give you that. And I'm gonna jump right into examples of uh, real world scenarios and, and situations that may be encountered. Um, after we've had a chance to look at what Upneta can solve, I'll take you through how Upneta does this a little bit and give you a chance to ask questions um, from that perspective. And once we've covered that, I'll run you through a remote worker visibility checklist, um, kind of a, a set of questions that you can ask yourself to determine where your gaps may be um, and what kind of requirements you might have in order to get the visibility you need. Okay, um, so let's get started. Right off the bat, um, as we're gonna look at these examples, in a modern network, traditional monitoring tools will give you the visibility of um, most of the network segments. It's those home Wi-Fi um, and home ISP environments where the visibility ends. Um, a home worker isn't necessarily going to be running part of your corporate network in their house and whoever they chose for their internet service is not part of your SLAs um, and is not part of your corporate agreement. And so visibility usually ends there, but if Netta can provide you that visibility and uh, that's what we're, what we're going to look at. In terms of working from anywhere, as we like to call it, or working from home as most people um, use the term, the kind of use case, the kind of challenge that this helps address is provide that extra visibility. But what it really helps answer is, um, where is my air domain? Is this a problem with that remote user's home network or ISP or even their laptop or anything else um, outside of normal visibility? Or can I quickly prove that as innocent so I'm not wasting time looking at the wrong thing? Um, and so the solution here is a combination of Apneta technologies, but by default, just the most basic monitoring will give you the visibility you're into and include that last mile. So all the way from the worker's laptop, all the way to your um, corporate network, you will have full visibility as if they are sitting inside one of your offices. And so for the examples, I'm going to go through finding the root causes of these various um, issues that are seen commonly. Uh, and in this particular case, I have examples for you covering um, users reporting that the network is slow or switching between, between wired and wireless, um, even a scenario where mobile tethering uh, was uh, not intended yet happened, and uh, issues with the laptop itself where it's either restarting or is generally slow, being able to immediately prove that it is or is not the network um, and where the error domain lies. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, first example. So a user reports that their network is acting really slow. And if Netta gives me instant insight into the before and after when they said it happened, around 4.30 they said. Now, I know we have that Q&A, we also have the ch chat functionality, but if anyone wants an easy give me, um, any guesses as to why their performance might have suddenly slowed down and why they're blaming our corporate network? And Cami, let me know if we've got an answer. Um, that's okay if uh, you guys just want to hear the answer. But I've got a setup here, um, and you may have noticed I do like my space. I do like my sandwiches. So I've got a 5 gigahertz modern network and a 2.4 gigahertz um, older network to ensure that I have compatibility with older devices. And the laptop, in this particular case, uh, fell onto that older network. I do not have the same kind of speed there. I do not have the same kind of performance. With Apneta, 
as a remote user um, and as an IT professional trying to troubleshoot this issue, I'm able to immediately see that this remote worker has dropped onto a slower Wi-Fi network and it happened right at the time they reported slowdowns and I can check further to see if other users are having a similar issue or if my internal corporate network is at fault, but immediately I can tell the root cause of the problem here. There is no issue with whatever they were trying to access, for example, Office 365. There's no issue with my corporate network. The error domain was inside their LAN and the correction to this one is to ask that user to either prioritize the five gig network or to entirely remove it from their laptop's known network list. Of course, it's good having it as a, as a backup to fall onto, but if this happens often um, and that 5G network goes away, uh, we might want to find out what's, what's going on with it. But we now know that the issue here lies entirely with the home user's network. In our next example, um, actually, before we move on to the next example, I did want to show you what it looks like under the hood in terms of the layer three performance. This is the exact same time period, right around 4.30 to 5.30 on um, that computer, that very laptop in that user's environment, trying to reach out to an Apneta target, this one in the closest Azure data center, and it shows us just the difference in performance. Uh, we can see that voice loss started to spike up in the outbound, uh, I'm sorry, in the inbound direction, um, coming back into their network. So if they were on calls like we are right now, uh, there would be a lot of metallic and a lot of gaps in the voice. Uh, we can also see that their jitter, although it didn't reach 20 milliseconds, it went up tenfold or more during that time. And so simply by being on the exact same internet connection on the exact same laptop, but switching onto an older Wi-Fi technology that is still probably the same distance to their laptop, their performance went down significantly. And their first reaction was to open a ticket with IT and say, hey, I don't know if you guys are doing um, some kind of updates after 4.30 because you think people are done, but I need this network to keep working. Nope. It is 100% within your home network. And in fact, we can give you hints as to how to solve it. So in a situation where a user uh, has switched from their wireless to a wired connection, Epneta can show that as well. Here's an example of what it looks like when they plugged in. The wireless signal strength and the various indicators go away. But if you notice in the top, left corner of that screenshot, it will indicate that during that time, that user was on a wired connection. And uh, hidden behind it, there's another screenshot of the events timeline. This event timeline shows when various activities took place, and it's got the exact point in time when the connection changed to a wired connection. So again, if we have a home user or a remote user that is normally wired, and for whatever reason, they flipped onto wireless or vice versa, um, and that correlates to an issue they were having, we can very quickly narrow down to the events that occurred at the same time. And that's uh, very beneficial as needed. So uh, my favorite example, mobile tethering. And this often happens on purpose, but sometimes it happens by accident. And I have two examples here of the kind of information showing the exact same event where right now at about 2 p.m., um, I am on my five gigahertz Wi-Fi network named Space Sandwich, and I'm doing well. I've got about 400 megabits of, of capacity on that Wi-Fi network, and the route down below shows me that I am on my internal network, 192.168.1, on my home subnet, and routing out to that Azure target that Apneta hosts. Um, everything's going hunky-dory. I was actually on a WebEx call during this and wanted to see the impact, and it was significant. Um, it was hard to see the call. And so what happened is I can see from the Apneta history that my SSID during this event was different. It's called Wi-Fi teal after the fact that I have some cockatiels. I know that this is my cell phone's hotspot, and it has the information here that an IT 
troubleshooter can pass on to the customer and say, do you know of a network called Wi-Fi Teal? Oh, that's your cell phone hotspot, right. We can see down below in my routing history, something interesting. My laptop now belongs to a 117 subnet, a different subnet than before. It is now tethering off my cell phone. But if you follow the routing line, it is actually still the cell phone itself connecting to my Wi-Fi gateway at home and routing out of my main internet connection. My laptop dropped off the Wi-Fi, but my cell phone remained on it briefly. And I do mean briefly because the very next data point shows me this kind of route. Now the cell phone is no longer routing through my home network. Now the cell phone is routing through the mobile towers on its way out. And of course, the performance of that is affected significantly. This is what the same 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. time period looked like while I was tethering. Latency and round trip time went up many orders of magnitude and were not stable. They were very bouncy, as you can see. Um, voice loss, again, in this particular case, the outbound loss remained at zero, but the inbound loss was spiking as high as 14%. And considering there weren't really many gaps in packet loss, it was almost always at least around 10%. That would have been very impactful to any calls I was on. Same goes for jitter. There is my inbound and outbound jitter, and this is all the way from that laptop, all the way in this case to an Azure data center. So if I'm using MS Teams, that represents pretty much all of the same hops. And jitter, at least in the inbound direction, is so high that even if some of the packets made it, odds are the system would discard them as they are way too late to be played back. And you can see that for the duration of me tethering off of the cell phone and the mobile data, this issue isn't cleaning itself up. It's not just a temporary blip. It's an unacceptable level of performance. And so again, a remote user that opens a ticket with IT or uh, an executive that's traveling for work that says, hey, listen, we're meeting with shareholders and investors. This is critical that it works. I can't believe we're still having these problems. Can you please figure out what's wrong with our DC? you can instantaneously have the answer that it had nothing to do with our DC. It's because he accidentally tethered off his cell phone. And, you know, I would probably not advise you to tell him I told you so. Um, you probably want to uh, break it to an executive relatively gently as to suggest how we can modify his laptop not to do that and help prepare him ahead of his next call. But you can have your answer very quickly and not waste time engaging teams to start checking logs on your firewalls, on your internal DC hosted applications to find out where the problem may have been. You have your answer within a few minutes of looking at the issue. So that's uh, an example of tethering off a cell phone and how AppNeta can quickly show you that. Um, another example is a user says, hey, my laptop restarted. I don't know what's going on, um, but the network's weird and my laptop's been really slow. Visually taking a look at the point in time, I can immediately see a gap in host metrics. Host metrics are also collected. In this case, we are looking at CPU and memory. And there is a bit of a gap uh, based on its size. Those of you familiar with uh, about that much time, that's about the length of a restart for a computer. And there is a lot of CPU pegging at the far end. We can actually see uh, nearly 90% CPU as the laptop came back. But if we look at the list of top processes that were running right before the restart, I can see that that MacBook was going through an OS update. And the fact that it restarted there, well, that makes sense. So in this case, one of two things can happen. If this is a laptop controlled entirely by the home user, then perhaps um, they can set their auto updates not to happen at will. And if this is a laptop provided by the company running on some kind of configuration management policy, then uh, we can ensure that this is not meant to happen during working hours. If you do take a closer look at the timing information there, um, this is just a real example from my laptop, and you can see that it happened around one in the morning. So no, this wouldn't have interrupted a real user because my laptop is set to only ever do these updates at night. But 
this is a clear example of an ambiguous report from an end user saying, I don't know what happened, it restarted, can you just fix it? And instead of saying, well, let me know when it happens again and waiting two weeks, um, you have an instant visibility into what was happening because the history is there and looking at the list of top processes and looking at other information available, you can very quickly narrow down to either what it must be or at the very least what it can't possibly be. And going further down the line, uh, a more ambiguous report from an end user, hey, my laptop is slow. Oh boy, that could mean any number of things. Uh, what do you mean your laptop is slow? Well, let me take a look at Apneta. And here I have two points in time, one right before the other, showing me that their top application on their laptop is something called Steam. In fact, steam.old was running, and then moments after when CPU was uh, spiking, Steam OS X was now running. That's interesting. It sounds like a piece of software upgraded itself on your laptop, used a little bit of CPU, um, and now we know what was going on. However, in addition to that, and this happened around, well, a little after 2.20, uh, going closer to 2.25 and ending around 2.30, if I look at my network metrics from that same Epneta information, I can see that starting around 2.20 till a little before 2.30, round trip time on this laptop trying to get to the closest Azure data center for this particular path I could I could be measuring against other targets, it doubled. And this lines up with the fact that that piece of Steam software after upgrading decided to do a bunch of upgrades uh, and updates on the games that it has installed. And those are sometimes in the tens of gigabytes. And so, yeah, this user would have had a bad time trying to use not just their laptop, whose hard drive and CPU are doing a lot of work, but also their home network, because this machine is currently re-downloading a whole bunch of game patches. I don't want to judge, but perhaps um, they could quit non-critical apps during working hours, or maybe just don't install games on a work laptop. That, that one might, might be a good suggestion as well. And so just by having insight into the processes on the system, into the Wi-Fi performance of the true laptop itself and what SSIDs it's connected to, and then seeing the layer three performance of metrics from that laptop to the targets of your choice, you can immediately have answers through that home network, through their Wi-Fi, through their ISP, and see the routes that all of that is taking to be able to prove innocence of the corporate network or be able to narrow it down to an issue regionally or with a single user, or at the very least, be able to know what not to waste time chasing. And so this is what Apneta helps you do. It provides that comprehensive visibility across the internet. And I'm using that as ambiguously as I can because rather than needing to work with specific vendors or you needing ownership over equipment uh, to monitor it via SNMP, Upneta can monitor anything that end users can touch. If that network, be it public internet or corporate network, is meant to be traversable by end users, then Upneta can traverse it as well and then tell you all about the performance it encountered while doing so. And so in this image, the traditional parts of the network, the branch offices, the hybrid clouds, the various on-prem um, areas which are already covered, I have grayed out because the focus in this case is that in between ISP, but in reality, it can cover the performance all the way from a client machine all the way to deep in your DC or public cloud and do it in both directions. And so for those of you that noticed already, Epneta provides this visibility in a number of different ways. Uh, primarily, it does it uh, by doing active monitoring where layer three, layer four performance is measured with the paths and the host metrics that we just saw. And it's also able to do layer seven active monitoring where it simulates what your users do in a web browser. It can do all of the same workflows, it can interact with the websites and it can collect that information and give you actual um, performance metrics over time. 
but in addition to that active monitoring, it does passive monitoring. It listens to what's already on the wire. It's able to capture the packets for you if you want to take a look at the PCAPs yourself, but 24 seven, it can also just ingest and analyze what's on that wire, tell you about the applications that are there, no need to have NetFlow collectors. Um, it can do it straight off the mirror or span, or you can put them in line um, if you'd like as well. And the ability to do this kind of monitoring is available in a number of different ways. You can deploy physical Epneta devices. Um, you can deploy virtual machines. There are container-based monitoring points. Um, what we saw today were the native monitoring points, the Windows and Mac OS clients that turn a laptop into an Epneta monitoring point at the cost of a percent of the CPU and about 35 to 40 megabytes of RAM. Uh, Potato could run it, honestly. As long as it's got modern Windows or modern Mac OS, it is OS signed, full service and uninstall support, uh, very clean, and can be managed um, through SCCM or something like it. There are also on-prem and private options and global uh, points of presence where Broadcom will host monitoring points for you uh, worldwide where you would like, so all bases are covered. And for those of you that have attended a previous webinar, you may have seen this slide that shows the kind of networks that exist out there and the level of complexity today. Um, we were talking about the lower quadrant of this with hybrid workers and VPN and working from home. But honestly, anything here can be measured by Epneta for performance and availability. And so whether it's part of your managed or unmanaged network, Epneta can give you visibility into areas where you previously had none. And so my next item here is to take you through the network monitoring checklist. But before I do so, I wanted to show you what the real GUI looks like. Because screenshots are pretty and all, but the real GUI um, tends to look a little bit different. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. So here is the exact example I just showed you where I was on my home network. I tethered onto my cell phone, that Wi-Fi teal up there, and then I came back off. And as you can see, the entire system is interactive as I move my mouse around. I can see my host metrics went way up. And if I take a look at what was running at the time by clicking into a point in time, I can see Meeting Center from WebEx was eating up over half a gigabyte of RAM and most and a, and a decent chunk of my CPU. Not a lot, but it all adds up. And as I kept going later, my meeting was still going, still 700 megabytes of RAM. And as I ended the meeting, I was back to clean performance. Google Chrome and its absolute hunger for RAM, I can see those, those level of details. The, here I can see further metrics of what happened during that call, just how bad my jitter was at the time. And the fact that Apneta, as it is designed to, ran diagnostics as it noticed poor performance and had the results of these diagnostics ready for me. Additionally, during this time, I also had my routes being collected. And in this case, there is my home subnet dot one. And this is before 2 p.m. As I scroll forward in time, I tethered through my cell phone subnet 117, but that cell phone was still able to route out of my main gateway and into the Azure data center. And as time went on, the cell phone lost that ability and now had to tether out through mobile towers. And you can usually tell from the IP addresses on these things that those aren't regular networks. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using a provider called TELUS Mobility. And so if I wanted to look at the ASNs involved, there's TELUS Communications and the hops involved, specifically its gateway before we route out to Microsoft. And so if you have different providers for the various um, ground-based and mobile ISPs, you'll be able to see those changes. And on the paths themselves, you'll be able to see the kind of um, routes that were taken. 
the interactivity of the software makes it very easy to scroll forward and back in time to look for deeper detail. It's all collected, it's all there. And so if you don't need it, that's fine. The general high level might give you your answer. But in cases like this, being able to see what was running on the laptop, being able to see which Wi-Fi SSIDs and especially which routes were being taken helps a lot. So from a checklist perspective uh, for monitoring remote workers, what's important? Well, let's take a look. First things first, we want to make sure we understand um, who we're counting as a remote worker. We have people who are hired remote. We have people currently working from home, perhaps hybrid. We have people internationally in other countries, those that travel often, and there are VIP users, those that um, might be unpredictable, but it is critical that they have good connectivity and you never know what kind of networks they're gonna be um, tethering off of. Let's hope not too many Starbucks uh, guest Wi-Fi's. But these are the kind of people you wanna to total up to ensure you understand just how big your work from anywhere scope is, because it may not be limited to the few remotely hired workers. You also wanna understand the critical apps, whether they are SaaS based and the data centers that these remote workers need to reach. So by identifying these and knowing the scope of cloud versus on-prem, you can design the monitoring from their laptops, from their workstations, to be such that it gives you visibility into the performance to on-prem through VPN or otherwise to cloud, direct to internet or otherwise. Once you have that, you're going to want to monitor the performance of not just the remote workers, but your remote offices and headquarters as well. Those represent the gold standard for performance. And those are where you own the networks and have full visibility already. And you wanna make sure that when you have issues, whether it's with the remote workers or otherwise, you can quickly compare. Because if there is an issue and the remote worker says, this is getting really annoying. I need to be able to access this app. And you see those spikes on their monitoring results. But then you look at your offices and they have the same spikes. You know it has nothing to do with their home Wi-Fi or the fact that they're a remote worker. It seems that from your wired remote offices, you are also seeing the same problem. And having that to compare is very important. A common thing that comes up with remote workers is how is the VPN configured? Are we using a full tunnel or a split tunnel? The split tunnel is becoming more and more common these days. Does all the traffic pass through the DC or are there some SaaS apps available to be accessed direct to internet? If everything goes through the DC, you've got a central point to monitor all traffic passively. And also that remote worker just needs to do active monitoring to the DC. Everyone, everything's gonna route that way anyway. But if there are apps that they are using nowadays and they're allowed to reach them direct to internet, you need that extra visibility. And with Apneta, you can create additional monitoring to hit those apps directly, give you insight into a network you otherwise would have had no visibility into. The beauty of software-based monitoring is it can be fully automated. And so that's the next thing you need to plan. How do you want to do this? Do you have a handful of very important um, VIPs where you might want to put it into their OS image or manually install it? Do you want to use a configuration management tool to take care of this? It can be done fully unattended. It can be done headless so that no remote worker ever sees a wizard pop up where they have to click next, next, next. Have it installed with a network policy. It'll keep itself up to date by default unless you've chosen to change that like any other piece of software, no need for OS restarts. And now you have the ability to monitor uh, from a work laptop its performance without A, needing to bother your worker or user, needing to do a remote session or even impacting their work since the overhead for this software is so low. And another very important part of this is you can get transparent about remote office insight. And what I mean by that, and this brings me into another use case that it's becoming more common, is you can actually set expectations with your remote users about around what is expected of them. No, they can't start using dial-up. No, they can't at home have someone absolutely downloading to the max while they're trying to work. 
there are certain expectations of a remote worker to have a quality of internet connectivity and the ability to be on voice calls, and that needs to be met. So by having this visibility, you can quickly validate that not only is this not a corporate issue, but this home user either has an insufficient internet connection or themselves is abusing their internet connection during the day, which is resulting in impact on their work. There are uh, several recent Epneta customers that are using these agents to test candidates during the interview process. They say, you're very talented. We'd love to have you work for us. However, because this job relies heavily on a good internet connection, we are going to need to install a piece of software that will run over the weekend or maybe over a week on your laptop. This will give us insight into your internet. And we can do one of two things. We can know for sure that it is more than good enough. Or if it's not, we can say, hey, listen, everything's great. We would love to have you as an employee. However, it appears that your current internet is insufficient. Are there any other internet packages you can subscribe to to meet at least these SLAs, at least this level of jitter, at least this level of capacity? Because if the candidate is good enough, you don't want to dismiss them if it's something solvable. And if this candidate is terrible, you can be like, oh, we'd love to have you, but your internet's too slow anyway by now. So it's really, uh, gives you the insight so you don't have to um, guess. And so taking a few steps back, what Epneta really does well in this particular case is the second point here, deliver work from anywhere performance visibility, allowing you to monitor not just from every location where users are, but to every kind of application because it can go through your DC, it can go direct to internet, it gives you the ability to gain insight into exactly the experience that user has and not an analog of it by bouncing off a router nearby. But Epneta does cover these other value drivers and it's very often used for them. Any transformation projects, imagine having the before, during, after visibility. Uh, it does make your IT teams far more efficient because it allows that visibility that answers questions quickly, no more being on 20 person Zoom calls all day long while everyone theorizes what the problem is. It just says all of these things are definitely innocent and what's left are gonna take five minutes to check. And it helps enhance that end user experience um, by being able to see what the end user sees and not just asking a router how its CPU is doing. You can quickly catch events and issues that you weren't even able to predict. If the impact is from something else, like another user flooding the network or an ISP having a problem they forgot to disclose, if it's gonna affect the performance, Epneta will show it and it will be there. And just to wrap things up, um, these questions come up often. So I wanted to include them in the presentation for those of you that wanted um, to perhaps answer them. There's a whole bunch of ways Epneta helps do this. Um, the active and passive monitoring in combination will allow you to see the same thing from two different perspectives. The fact that all of this monitoring happens continuously without heavy overhead makes this um, hugely beneficial. The deployment as mentioned, we can have physical, virtual, software and container-based uh, monitoring points out there. Cost of ownership for those of you that have had it before, there's no accidental guesswork. There's no, whoops, it cost me more than I thought it would. The price is exactly what's in the contract. And if you somehow manage to use more, it doesn't charge you for it. Um, it's quite flexible on that. The only way for you to ever pay more is that during the next renewal, you agree on a different price. So you'll never be surprised by a bill the way you are with token-based subscription services from other companies. The scalability, the security of the solution, and the fact that it is no longer a small startup, but Broadcom itself means that this isn't going anywhere and can handle the largest networks and cloud providers um, out there. So does anyone have any questions? It looks like we have one question so far, Cesare. Um, but before we get to that, just a reminder to everyone that you can type your question in the Q&A box located in your control panel, or you can even uh, drop it in the chat if you like. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the question. Uh, it looks like this is a two-part question, Cesare. 
This okay. person says our organization has a lot of remote workers, mostly traveling sales and executives. Can this scale to hundreds of users and will this work with networks outside of their homes, such as hotels and airports? Ah, okay. Um, so hundreds of users, the quick answer there is, yeah, no sweat. Thousands of users very easily. I don't even have to look into it. Tens of thousands of users. There are customers doing that today. And of course we triple check that for that scale. Um, I think the more important question there would be how you would manage that. But again, with um, something like SCCM, that should be pretty easy. Yeah, not a problem. Um, tens of thousands without breaking a sweat. If you've got something bigger, um, we can create server infrastructure and, and set it up in such a way that it will handle it. Uh, the second part of the question I really like because that's something that came up um, for me when I was traveling recently. The beauty of it is that unlike traditional monitoring tools where the network that you want to monitor is something you need to access and have control over, and as soon as you jump onto a different network, you might be blind, Epneta doesn't care what you use. Just like in my tethering example, when I went from my home network to a mobile network, whatever network is in the way, that's the network whose performance is being measured. So this user that might normally be at home and their performance might normally show you their home Wi-Fi, their home router, their home ISP before going deeper into the internet. Now they're in an office uh, remotely or they're in a coffee shop or an airport or a hotel on a guest Wi-Fi. And Epneta doesn't care. Epneta will measure the true performance through those hops, through those wireless and wired connections and tell you exactly what kind of performance they're seeing. And you'll have that history. So you'll be able to look forward and back in time, see when they finally connected to this, when they were tethered off their cell phone, when the guest Wi-Fi said that it was a bar. And um, just the same, you'll have that level of insight regardless of where they are. No need to worry that it's not an instrumented environment. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, let me know if there are any others. Yep, there's one more question. Um, the question is, is there any way to identify the problem is other users in the home causing the issue while streaming Netflix, updating from Steam, et cetera? Great, yeah. So that goes back to the example that I was showing where um, let's say instead of mobile tethering, the user reports that the network is slow. Um, so for this, let me jump into my example here. So as we have these kind of large uh, packet loss situations, this one was because I tethered. But one of the things Epneta shows is capacity. And capacity is a special calculation based on the performance of the network all the way from my computer, in this case, all the way to my target. If any of the hops along the way, including the hops in my own home, are causing enough of a problem because they're dealing with cross traffic, something that has nothing to do with my source, nothing to do with my target, a different user on my home network is passing through my gateway and then heading to a different server somewhere else, but it is causing that gateway to be slammed, I would see something like this, where my normal amount of available capacity and my normal amount of utilized capacity look like they're being sandwiched together. And I'm gonna zoom out a little further in this example because here we were looking at just the moment in time when I had pegged my network on purpose, but you would see something like this during normal use. Here I am on my five gigahertz Wi-Fi, and sometimes we have dead air because no one else was up at six in the morning. And while I started working, I had moments where I was utilizing big chunks. With Wi-Fi, you know it's time splitting, so there's a lot more variance in how I would use the network. But if someone else gets on there and starts using it, it will absolutely skyrocket it. And I'll be able to see that from just the capacity of my laptop to my target being affected. And then those diagnostics that run at that time will allow me to identify which hop it was. And the diagnostic that ran here, this diagnostic ran during my tethering uh, issue. And I could see that packet loss was happening very early on. It wasn't being introduced later in the network. I can see that my MTU was fine through my network. And I can see that jitter 
in my LAN was already hitting triple digits, as was round trip time for its maximum values. So I could tell that the congestion was originating inside the LAN and not at, on the ISP or the peering partner or the DC at the far end. And so in a situation like this, where you're asking yourself, did the issue um, occur inside the network on the corporate network or somewhere else, I can with Apneta quickly narrow it down to the issue is inside the LAN. It is definitely happening at that house. I can see from this laptop and its host metrics that it wasn't doing anything funny. And on my checklist of questions that as a support engineer I would ask is, is there anything using your home internet connection right now that could be causing interference? Because your laptop looks fine, but we can see that the network congestion begins inside your home network. And so you've just narrowed it down to probably a question or two to them going, oh, right, I forgot. Let me just go shut that down. And let me know if that answers your question or if you have any other follow-ups. We have a few more questions, Larry, if there, you okay. have time. Of course. Oh, all right. This person says, are there several agent types or just one type of agent type? If there are several agent types, what are they? Right. So by agent type, um, I'm guessing you mean the software that installs onto Windows or Mac OS. So there is one, um, one for Windows, one for Mac OS. It does um, what it needs to, and it's designed to be as lightweight as possible. Um, it used to be supported uh, for older Windows uh, versions and Mac OS versions. And to be fair, it'll probably still run there. Broadcom just officially supports the last version or two. Um, there are so many other deployment options. So for containers alone, there's two. You can go uh, very, the very lightweight version on something like a Cisco 93 or 9400 switch or a heavier version that will do a lot more uh, monitoring. Um, virtual machines, KVM, VMware. You can go on vCenter or bare metal ESXi. So odds are that whatever particular use case you have and whatever limitations you need to work within, there will be an Apneta solution that can cover that. And so for that question, I'll have to defer to whatever your environment is and what limitations you think you have that might not be good enough for Apneta. Let's talk about it and we'll find a solution or be honest with you and tell you Apneta can't run in that environment but I'm confident it can. And you mentioned there's one more question, right, Kami? Yes. Um, and then I think this is a follow-up to that question. Um, it says, so that there are agents for iPhones, question mark. Uh, right, so um, a number of years ago, there was an Apneta agent for an iPhone. Uh, currently there is not. I don't know if there are any plans from Broadcom to uh, go back to that. But today, there is no app for an iPhone or an Android um, to give you this level of visibility. It would have to be a Windows or Mac OS workstation. All right. And we have one last question. Um, the question is, does Apinetta extend troubleshooting or performance up to layer 7 issues, performance issues accessing a specific service from a web server? Right. Um, so Apinetta does this uh, by default through all other uh, monitoring point types, uh, the hardware, the virtual machines, the containers, that's where it runs a full web browser and is able to replicate the same kind of workflows that users take. Now, this was purposefully excluded from the agent that runs on Windows and Mac OS because it requires several gigs of RAM. It is very heavy processing wise, however, since uh, that was done, another kind of layer seven monitoring was added. They call it HTTP monitoring. Essentially, it's a super powered curl with the ability to talk to APIs. It can talk to full websites. It has the ability to um, send whatever user agent string you want. So you can pretend to be a Chrome browser, Safari, Firefox, whatever you want. You can pretend to be an iPhone and it has the ability to interact with what comes back. So you can do regex matching on the body, or on the headers. And yes, this will allow for full layer three, layer four, and layer seven monitoring. It can run, um, say, every five minutes or every 10 minutes, whatever you'd like, and make sure that the web server on the other end is serving the content and the status codes that you're after. 
all running from a laptop with very little impact to its its processing. So yes, there is full layer seven monitoring um, that's possible as well. Today I was primarily showing you guys the layer three monitoring, but that exists as well. And I'd be happy to give anyone a much more detailed demo if you are interested or have a use case, because um, we can just show you this working in real life. Okay, um, any other questions at this time? No, that was it. I think we're done. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, great questions today. Love the interactivity. And hopefully I was able to teach you a little bit about what Epneta can do, show you some of the possibilities. Uh, I do expect this may bring up some other questions um, down the road for you. If you have further questions, uh, please reach out to us. The contact info is right there and we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, I think it's a great product. It provides amazing visibility without the need to control any of these networks. And for those that are remote, which is becoming more and more part of modern corporate reality, it solves an otherwise unsolvable problem for traditional monitoring tools. Thank you all very much and have a great day. Thanks everyone, bye.